Hello. Uh, welcome to Statistics and Theory. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do a, a t-test, an in independent samples t-test, as well as Mann-Whitney uh, u-test, which is the uh, non-parametric equivalent of t-tests. The software package I'm going to use is Jamovi. It's a free software package, and if you have not downloaded it, I suggest that you go to this website and download the latest version from this link. I will I will leave this link in the comments section below this video and you can actually access it without a subscription or any additional information. So the data that I'm going to use is a part of Jamovi datasets and you can find that from this menu which is uh, represented by three bars in this corner. You, you can click on this and you can click on open as well then click on either this PC or uh, or data library if you have your own data you can actually uh, load it onto your uh, Jamovi version by clicking on PC and you can perhaps browse and you find your data the sort of data files that are supported by Jamovi are uh, quite varied for example if you click on this uh, drop-down menu, you'll find the Jamovi's file plus a bunch of other files like CH, uh, uh, CSV and text, uh, open documents, uh, as well as Excel, SPSS, R data file, Stata, SAS, and JASP, which is another free software package, uh, are supported by Jamovi. So, um, you can actually find your own data file and simply click open and you'll get it. But for this presentation, as I said, I'm going to use the, the data set that's available in Jamovi. And let's just choose this one. It's called Bugs from Ryan, Wild, and, and Chris, 2013. It's uh, used for a repeated measure ANOVA but I'm going to use it only for an independent samples t-test as well as Man Whitney, as I mentioned before. So I'm going to click on this to open. So the data set is open now. You can toggle between uh, analyses and data. Uh, so let's take a look at the data button as I have explained this before in other videos. You can uh, click on setup to change the properties of your data. For example, you can change the name of the variable that you have and then click on the next variable or you can uh, you know move to the next variable by using this arrow on the right side and move back to the previous one by using the arrow on the left side so you can make all sort of changes to the name you can include a description so you'll remember what this variable uh, measures or is about then you can choose the type of measure which is nominal ordinal continuous or in some cases if if you have an ID like the variable here on the uh, this subject variable um, you can actually change it here I think it has been um, perhaps miscoded as continuous so you can, I, I'm going to change it to ID here because it's not really a continuous variable it just refers to uh, the name of subjects or the ID for subjects. So I would like to hide this uh, menu and go back to analyses from this tab on, on top. Um, if you do not see the t-test or ANOVA or any of these modules that you see on top in this uh, tool uh, toolbar, you should go to modules in the left in the right uh, corner in the top right corner, click on it and get Jamovi library. Um, all the um, modules that are available will be presented in the, uh, under available tab and you can scroll down and find the module that you want it's very easy to install them you just you can just click on install and install any of the modules that you want um, if you want to figure uh, want to see what modules you have already installed click on the installed and you see the no all modules that you have already installed as you see I have installed three more modules so far um, and I will discuss these in other videos in the future. So let me hide this um, module menu and go back to the main menu and start running a t-test, an independent samples t-test followed by non-parametric tests. So I'm going to click on t-test, independent samples t-test and uh, 
the menu uh, uh, is populated. Now, what I would like to do is to do a an independent samples t-test across gender. So as you see, gender uh, previously, let me go back to data, gender is, is nominal and is actually is not a uh, written variable, it's, it's, it's not a quantified variable, it's, it's a so-called string variable. Instead of digits or numbers, we've got uh, alphabets. But uh, Jamovi actually recognizes that and it doesn't uh, make any problems in Jamovi. So I'm, I'm going back to uh, the independent samples t-test menu again and <coughs> move gender to the grouping variable. This is going to be our independent variable. And we have several dependent variables here, uh, which is uh, LDLF, LDHF, LDLF, uh, sorry, HDLF and HDHF. So I would like to move all of these to the, uh, the other side. Uh, to the dependent variables and you see uh, the uh, output is automatically uh, uh, updated for us. Now you have quite a few options here to make and so the first thing I would like to see is whether we can also look at the mean differences so you can look at that and and it will be populated immediately. Next is uh, if you're interested to get the interval, sorry, the, uh, no, I mean, confidence interval is also fine, but effect size is very important and you can actually include that effect size. Um, for descriptive statistics, why not getting descriptive stats? And if you're uh, interested to look at the plots, you can actually t uh, immediately click on this and the plots will be populated like that. But for the time being, I think descriptive plots are not something we want to look into. Uh, the most important thing here f in this video uh, is Man Whitney and, and Welsh. These are the non-parametric equivalents of the student's t-test. Um, and they're important since if you find any, uh, any um, evidence for deviation from the normality or any evidence that the homogeneity of the variances is not met, then you can rely on Welsh and Man Whitney's U-test. Uh, so, uh, so that brings me to the assumptions of the t-test. There are two assumptions. One is, I mean, in addition to uh, the uh, grouping variable being dichotomous or binary and the dependent variables being uh, continuous, uh, the, the, two, the two important assumptions are homogeneity of the variances of the two groups and the normality of the data. So I'm going to click on both. Uh, another way of looking at the normality of the data is uh, by looking at the QQ plot. It, pr it provides us with a visual representation of the normality of the data. So uh, on this side, the hypotheses uh, can be, different hypotheses can be tested. I think uh, it will be safer just to keep group one and group two are not equivalent, unless you have a hypothesis that allows you to assume that, for example, your first group, females, uh, has a higher mean score than the second group or the other way around. Ultimately, it doesn't really affect the results of your analysis. So it doesn't matter which one you choose. I, I suggest that if you don't have any idea about which group should be larger, just keep the default. And for missing values, you can either exclude cases, uh, case, uh, cases analysis by cases analysis by analysis or exclude cases list wise. I, there should be uh, minor you know, differences between the two. I'm going to keep the first one unless you have a lot of uh, missing data, in which case the, uh, the, there will be a significant difference between the two. So let's look at the first uh, option for this presentation. And the results are out now. Uh, you can see that the student's t-test is not significant for the first variable, which means that there is no significant difference between females and males. And the two non-parametric tests are telling us more or less the same story because the p-value uh, is much larger than 0 0.05 or 0 0.01 if you like to be more conservative. So the, the rest of these statistics are not important because uh, even the, um, uh, the coens D, which is an indication of the effect size, 
is not very much useful even though it sounds it seems like a medium one so co cohen's d is is large when it's uh, when it gets to around 0 0.8 it's medium when it's around uh, 0 0.5 and it's considered small if it's 0 0.2 or around that. In this case, even though these are about, I mean, between small and medium, since, like I said, the p-value is not uh, statistically significant, so th the effect sizes do not make a lot of sense. We're looking for any p-value, first of all, to to see uh, any p-value which is small, which would be smaller than 0 0.01 or 0 0.05, to uh, make sure that there is a difference between the groups we are comparing. In this case, the last variable, which is HDHF, uh, has got, uh, it's almost close to 0 0.05. It's not still statistically significant, but the Man Whitney U test uh, indicates that there is some significance in terms of the differences, uh, the statistical significance in terms of the differences between females and males. Uh, so if the data is not normal distributed, especially this one, then you can rely on the Mann-Whitney U test. And we can take a look at the effect size for the Mann-Whitney U test, which is 0 0.288, almost 0 0.3, which is around medium. And actually, it's in line with the Cohen's D, which has been estimated for the Welsh test and the students test. So let's, for the time being, let's figure out uh, whether our data is normally or not normally distributed. There are two ways of looking at it, as I have mentioned in, in the previous videos. One way is to look at the Shapiro-Wilk test. Uh, so Shapiro-Wilk test per, um, estimates a p-value, and if the p-value is smaller than 0 0.05, there is significant deviation from normality. And in this case, I think, uh, as you can see, th there is evidence that these three variables here this, this, and this are deviating from normality uh, significantly. Uh, therefore, we can here we can trust that the results of Man with U test is telling us uh, the the truth uh, or giving us a better understanding of the analysis. Um, so the data is uh, the sample size is around um, I think it should be around 100 or so maximum. Yeah, as you see, there are different. Uh, yeah, if you add up, for example, males and females in each of these variables, it will add up to something around, uh, something less than 100. So Shapiro-Wilk would not be a really, uh, would not be a bad test here because the sample size falls between 50 and 300. So it's, it's pretty fine to use Shapiro-Wilk and as a result to use Mann-Whitney uh, U test. The other thing that we need to consider is the homogeneity of the variance. It's another assumption. Uh, that um, we need to check to make sure uh, that the t-test we want to use is suitable. Now, for homogeneity variance, we set the alpha level at 0 0.01 because uh, it easily gets inflated due to the sample size and other reasons. As you see, all of these p-values are, are much larger than 0 0.01. And therefore, we have enough evidence that the homogeneity of variance holds in uh, in all of the variables that uh, independent variables that we are testing, whereas the uh, normality assumption has been violated in three of them. The well, th these are also the descriptive statistics of the sample which are provided for us. Now, another way is. Uh, as I've discussed in previous videos, of looking at normality is by is to consider looking at these plots, the QQ plots. So the QQ plot has some dots, as you see here, which have been arranged along a a line, which has some sort of uh, steep slope. The line represents a normal distribution. So the farther these dots fall from this line, uh, the more evidence we have uh, regarding the uh, violation of the assumption of normality of the data. As you see, some of these data are falling quite far away from our sample, so from our, uh, our, our line here. And therefore, we have some evidence that uh, this is not a perfect normality. As you uh, scroll down, you will see that there, uh, the 
a deviation from normality becomes more uh, outstanding and and here as well is uh, pretty conspicuous i wouldn't really call especially this part right on top i wouldn't call this a very good um, a very uh, close fit with a normal distribution and last but not least this one is also not very normal distributed therefore in this case um, i would rely on the results of the welsh or perhaps even better would be man whitney's u test so that brings me to the end of this presentation i hope you found it useful um, if you like liked it please give it a like and subscribe to the channel thank you very much